Hello everybody, we are back for day 12 of WordPress for Designers on blog.themeforest.net and uh, we're moving right along with our PSD. Today we're going to focus on um, slicing and uh, pulling out the images that we're going to need. We're going to talk about uh, why, why or why we don't need certain aspects of our PSD and uh, how we're going to make it kind of all fit together to work with WordPress and um, and uh, get the images ready to uh, jump straight into WordPress. Um, thanks to all of you who answered uh, the questions that I asked um, in day 11. I asked if we should, uh, if you guys would feel more comfortable slicing and then going into an HTML theme and then going into WordPress, or if you guys would feel more comfortable uh, slicing today and then uh, day 13 we will just go straight into WordPress and start putting the HTML and um, and the CSS structure together. So um, the feedback seemed like it was 75% or more for um, going straight into WordPress and I think that's probably a better idea because there are a lot um, of good tutorials out there especially on NetToots which I will link to um, that have more about slicing a PSD and going into an HTML and stuff. So today we are going to um, look at the important elements of our PSD that we need, slice them, get them out of there, uh, talk about a few things, and jump straight into WordPress uh, next time. So open up Photoshop here. Um, that's what I'm going to be using. I'm sure that's the software most of us are on. Um, you know, I guess you could use GIMP if you don't have Photoshop or you know you can't get it or whatever. Um, so let's uh, let's just kind of take this at the home page now and. Firstly, um, I have the background gradient hidden um, as I don't want it to kind of interfere with anything that we're going to be slicing yet, and we'll grab that, um, you know, some some point later. Um, but the first thing I want to do is grab the background from here. So let's zoom in just a little bit. And if my computer runs a little slow here, like I said, uh, Photoshop tends to run a little slow, especially when I have screencast software running. So um, apologies in advance, but. For the background, there's a little bit of noise uh, going on in this uh, blue we have. And in day um, 11, we discussed that all we need is a little chunk. So I'm going to just kind of take a chunk here. Okay, and that should do it. And what I'm going to do is right click. I'm going to say Edit Slice Options. And I'm going to name it um, Background. And I'll hit OK. And the next thing I'm going to do is, uh, we don't need the logo, I don't think, right now. Um, but we're going to try it with just HTML and CSS. We'll mess around with the typography and uh, the letter spacing and some of the font weights. And I think we can get it looking pretty nice uh, with just pure, pure text, which would be a bonus. You know, um, don't have to use any extra images here. So the navigation, um, obviously, it's just text, so we don't have to worry about the actual font. And the little border here, all we need to know is the color, which we'll find out um, if we just use the eyedropper. And, uh, and we can just use the border property in CSS, and we will cover that when we hit our CSS. So um, what's kind of nice about this theme is we're really not going to need that many images. So moving right along, we come to the big featured section, which I want to discuss a little more, and I know I touched on on day 11. Um, we are going to do a slider. It's going to be cool. It's, you know, it's kind of... Um, a nice way to have a lot of content in a smaller area so we will cover the slider but uh, at first we talked about slicing off um, like the top the middle and then the bottom and kind of using that to have a dynamic height um, and I was gonna do that but before I did this I realized that Jeffrey used the same PSD and sliced it into just an HTML template to kind of show everybody how you would do that and I will link to that um, because it's a great tutorial uh, screencast but he made the point that this, in the way this design is set up and the way the content is made, we don't really need, this isn't really made to be a dynamic height, especially when you look at, you know, some of the texture and how it's just a snippet and it's meant to be a slider. So it's, this would work a lot better if it actually was just a set height. And that'll make things a lot easier for us because we're just going to be, since we're working with WordPress, we're just going to be um, taking out some of the, uh, snippets here from a from a blog post category so it's not like we're gonna have uh, a whole ton of content to scroll through here that's not um, what this kind of design is all about anyway so that's great though that's gonna make 
this even easier. It just means just, you know, a lot less, you know, we'll just take one image here instead of having to worry about slicing all three of them and then putting them together with different divs and, and whatnot. So if I scroll down to the home folder here and I kind of drop it down to see its children um, and I go to the featured, which is already dropped down, I'm going to hide the pagination, which are the buttons. I'm going to hide the featured content. And I'm just going to slice this and make sure I get the drop shadow. And, uh, and we're going to just keep the blue in the background because I don't believe, um, I think it'll look okay with the repeating chunk that we have here. Um, if it doesn't, we can always come back and make a ping. But it should be okay if we just leave a little bit of blue in the background. And we want, just want to make sure that we get all of that drop shadow that's there. So Because it has a nice little outer uh, drop shadow on all the uh, borders here. So that looks good, and we will right click on this and say edit slice options, and we'll call this featured underscore BG for background, featured background, and we'll hit OK. Now I'm going to come back to this and we're going to slice out a few more things from the slider that we need, but let's move down um, to the footer since we're kind of covering all the um, non-transparent items right now. Um, we're going to come back to the content as well, so, but for now just come down to the footer. And we are going to open up the footer and we're going to hide any of the text. Um, we Obviously we can do all of this, with, we don't need any images in here, that's all text anyway. Whoops. And again, this, uh, this footer is obviously not going to be a dynamic height, so we can just take the whole thing. And again, there is a slight um, outer glow to it, so we want to make sure we get that. And yep, that looks uh, like a good slice. I'm going to bring it down a little bit here. Not that much. Oh, come on. Okay, well that looks good. And we're going to right click. And we'll just save this as footer underscore background, or BG for background. Okay, so now we have kind of the background here, we have our featured section, and we have our footer. Um, let's go ahead and just to show you how we, we can get, get these out um, of our slices, we can click Save for Web and Devices. Okay, and we can save them, uh, I'm going to save them at like 75 quality should be nice and we're gonna click on save and now the thing to note is we don't we don't want it might be by default set on all slices and that would slice all these different you know slices um, that occurred because of the slices we made and we only want the the three that we've made so far the background the featured section and the footer so if we go to slices we can select all user slices and now see how it says save as layout um, that would be like a default name if we didn't already name them but this isn't really relevant since we've already right clicked and named our um, slices that we've made so far so let's click save okay that's done if I go to my desktop here and then I go to images okay you see we have background featured background and footer background it's perfect it's what we wanted so that said let's go ahead and um, clear our slices course you can do a lot more than this all at once I'm just kind of trying to take it slow and a uh, chunk at a time here for everybody go ahead and kind of revert things back to where they were in the footer and now let's go to the featured section again which is kind of a big area for us and let's turn on um, the pagination and the, the content okay now if we if we zoom in you can see that we have these little buttons here and uh, obviously we can just do text, but we're going to need the buttons for the background. Um, uh, and especially this little, uh, you know, arrow circle icon here. So we're going to want to just carefully slice that out of here. And make sure we don't cut it off at all. My Photoshop skills aren't great, so I'll try to do my best. Leave it up to the designers of you out there. Okay, and I think that's good. I think I'm cutting new thing off. Oh, I had it, but I had to mess with it. Let me just expand that a little bit. There we go. Okay. We'll right click, we'll hit edit slice options, 
and we'll just call this um, circle arrow off the top of my head. I don't know. We can rename that if we like. If we like. I think that's pretty descriptive. Okay, and let's just go ahead and um, and just save that again. We'll click save. Um, all user slices, and we should have it in our images again. Circle arrow, nice. Okay. So now what we need is the button. So again, I'm going to come over here. I'm going to clear the slices. And we want to get uh, just one of these buttons um, so we can put some text on them. And they're both the same width. So we'll get into Featured, Pagination. And we can just kind of mess around here um, to try to hide all this stuff. There we go. And we're just going to carefully slice one of these buttons here taking as little of the background from them as we can and of course you know if you've seen my slice skills are a little subpar so bear with me okay it looks like I got enough of that right click edit slice options uh, we'll call it uh, slider underscore button in case we have another button we don't want to just name it button Okay, and we'll uh, we'll go ahead and save that for web and devices. Save all user slices, and now we will have that. And again, we'll clear our slices and zoom out. Let's revert everything so we don't forget about it. Okay, um, and of course we'll take this image out. That's kind of a no-brainer. That's just a little square. But I want to touch on um, the transparency here because that's what we're going to have to do for a few of the elements, um, s um, at least on this airplane um, right now. So we can see in the content area that we can do all of this text with HTML and CSS and, um, and that, that should be pretty easy. And uh, we can also do the three columns. There's no real special images here. So we don't have to worry about that. But this little airplane here, it's got like some weird shadows and shapes to it and if we could try to just get all the blue here but it just with that much blue in the background it might not work out with our repeating background that we have going so we're just gonna save it as a transparent ping and then we'll just apply a fix to it for IE so the first thing that we want to do is come down to uh, main content which is where all of this is located in we're gonna hide the excerpt here and what I'm gonna do is just slice around the paper airplane and that looks pretty good I'm surprised I got it on the first try I'm sure you all are surprised too <laughs> and now we need to make sure it's transparent so I need to hide the background and I need to hide the other background and I know it's hard to see now which is why I sliced it when we still had the background visible and we'll just right click edit slice options and we're gonna name this plane hit OK save for web and devices save all user slices good save it and we're done so that was pretty simple for the for the transparency and let's turn back on the background here okay so that covers um, all of our elements I believe uh, besides this image which we'll just you know we'll just take um, from our home page. Yep, I think that's it. Okay, so now we need to move on. We have a few more pages I want to look at, and I won't take you guys through every single mundane page, but I do want to talk about um, a few more um, elements of our layout here. So if we hide the home page and we just go to like a static page, like an about page, we can see we kind of have the same thing going, except now we have a sidebar um, thing we need to grab, a little arrow. Um, and a dark arrow maybe and uh, you know we already have our plane so we'll be able to position that but we need to take out one of these um, smaller you know featured kind of about us background pages here which will be on um, everything but the home page and the blog and again um, you know I don't think we need a dynamic uh, height here this is just going to be pulled from what's called a WordPress excerpt 
and we're just going to um, make it real easy for the user to fill in this information from the WordPress admin panel but it's not going to be a whole lot of info um, like I said that's just not how the design is meant to be the, you know the rest of the info would fall here and then any links would be in the sidebar so um, let's go ahead and do that let's go to about and we'll see um, the featured if we hide that you can see everything disappears so let's start um, hiding stuff let's get rid of the paper plane let's get rid of the excerpt copy and there we go and we're going to do the same thing as before we are going to slice this and make sure we get the kind of the outer drop shadow there of course I need to open that up some and that looks okay we're going to give it a name and we'll say um, oh let's say uh, featured page background and we'll hit OK okay before we save that and export it to our images folder uh, we know we already have the footer but let's talk about the sidebar now the sidebar I think we are justified in having a dynamic height because we don't know how many links they're gonna have um, we just don't you know we don't know what is all going to be in the sidebar we want to keep it open uh, to the user oops I need to keep those hidden for now okay so let's uh, let's find the sidebar which should be in main content and under sidebar so yep okay that's our sidebar I was hoping uh, there'd be an easier way to get rid of all of our text so we can kinda take this out but I might have to just experiment a little here guys um, so apologies about that yeah I'm just gonna have to hide this stuff real quick okay and that last little arrow did I miss it yes okay good now what we can do is just take three slices um, just like so we're gonna take the top like that we are going to take a middle section gonna make the top a little bit taller here to get some of this uh, some of this gray shadow in we're gonna take just a small little middle section here okay and then we're gonna take the bottom okay so now what we can do is you know we can click edit slice options uh, sidebar top click OK Let me zoom in here and we can uh, click on the middle one edit slice options side oops sidebar middle and again, um, oops, I want to make sure this stretches out to the, there we go, edit slice options, sidebar, bottom. Okay, and make sure these are all lined up like so, perfect. And now we can just go to, you know, now we have our um, single page background here, we have our three slices on our sidebar, and that's all we need from um, from this for this page and for most of the static pages. So we save for web and devices. Uh, we will have to go back and get those little arrow icons, but uh, we'll take care of that. Save. Make sure you're on all user slices. We click save, and that's that. So we'll go ahead and clear our slices and kind of uh, show some of these things again. And I actually don't want that little blue background on history because I want one of the light arrows and one of the dark arrows. We just want to make sure we take uh, an arrow. And, you know, we don't need it to be transparent as, as long as we make sure it's on just kind of a... Um, we don't take much of the background and, and the background just kind of this white color that we're working with. So I don't think there's any need for us to make these transparent, at least not at the moment. Okay, and see if I can get this 
how I'd like it. Okay, there's a light arrow and let's take a dark arrow here. And a little bit more in the bottom. Okay. And a little bit more on the top. Say edit slice options on the dark arrow, and I think that's an appropriate name. Dark arrow. We'll go down to the light one, edit slice options. Light arrow. Oops. Okay. And um, before we save this, this little blue bar here, I think we're just going to, I mean, it has barely any rounded corners. And I think instead of saving that as an image, that we'll just use a, a hover property and we'll have a little fun with the border radius here. And since it's such a small little curved border, you know, if the, if the border radius isn't supported in that, um, in the user's browser, you know, it'll just default to, to a square corner, which, which will barely be noticeable um, of a difference because of how um, slightly rounded these corners are. And I think that'll give us a chance to kind of have some fun with um, some, you know, CSS properties that we don't really get to use very often. So let's hit save for web and devices save make sure you're on all user slices and uh, and that's that so we'll clear slices I'm gonna I like to stay organized here in my PSD so I'm gonna make sure I you know show everything that I have uh, whoops, hidden so far yep I think that's good okay so now let's look at one more page um, that I want to look at, which is the blog. Okay, you can see we already have uh, most of the stuff we need here. We have the background for the blog. We have this, um, you know, the sidebar um, paper stuff, but we're going to need this little go um, background gradient blue button here. And um, yeah, that's all we're going to need for the blog. So let's zoom in on the search thing. And under blog, we will go to, um, where is it under? Main content, yep. Sidebar search. And we'll hide go. And then I will just do my best to take just this little button here. Uh, looks like I got it. I'm surprised I got that on the first try. Okay, and we'll just call it a search button. Click OK. Zoom out here. Save for web and devices. You guys know how to do this by now. Click save, and uh, and that's it. Okay, so I mean, it's that simple for our blog. Everything else, um, oops, a little separator here. Uh, yeah, we'll grab that. You'll notice there's this little separator, which is a, um, a nice way to use kind of two different colors to give it just a little bit of polish and, and uh, separate kind of the content from one another. You know, we could probably use a border, but let's, let's go ahead and slice it now in case, in case we need it um, down the road. And I'm just going to give it a really small slice here. I know it's kind of probably hard for a lot of you to see this, but I got it. And right click, edit slice options. And we will save this as, um, you know, uh, a blog separator. Okay. Clear slices. And lastly, um, we need to take a look at the contact page. Okay, notice the contact form. We're going to need the send button and one of these input boxes, or what will be an input box, and the text area box. So um, to finish off our day, we will grab those. So um, let's drop down the content area here and zoom in. I don't think we need any transparency here as long as we don't grab much of the blue background. And remember we only need one of these input areas because they're all going to be the same. So 
looks good. Edit slice options, and we'll name this, um, you know, contact input. We'll come down to the text area and we'll give it a little slice there. Edit slice options and we'll say uh, text area background. You know, feel free to name these whatever you like. I'm just kind of trying to stay descriptive here. And uh, now we need to hide this little send uh, text as we'll put that over ourselves in the HTML markup. So let's see, where is that? In the contact, main content, there it is. Send. And you gotta have hats off to Jeffrey here for how well this PSD is organized. I mean, everything is just in relevant groups. Um, just a really nice job. So let's do this. Unfortunately, I think it's snappy, and I want to have a little more control here. There we go. Okay, and edit slice options. And uh, contact send. Hit OK, and we'll kind of zoom out to see what we got here. Um, whoops, and now we covered our input um, areas, our text area, our send button. We have our sidebar, we have our featured, um, we have our background. So we're going to save this. And then we're going to grab our uh, gradient. So we'll save. Okay. So the last thing we're going to do is try to grab that gradient, which is going to be a little tricky and um, it's definitely going to be transparent here. So what we're going to, let me get some of my groups back here. Okay, if I hide the contact and I show the gradient, you can see it kind of goes all the way to the top here. It kind of fizzles out over here where my cursor is, and it kind of, you know, bottoms out, you know, around here. So what we're going to do is we're going to slice it where we can see it right now, which is, you know, we'll start at the top and it doesn't extend. We can get away with, you know, taking it right about it close to the one inch margin. And we're just gonna you know, give it a big slice here. Come over here, take it about to 13, and drop down a little more, and just kind of eyeball it, you know, and, and and just see, grab most of that gradient. And remember, it's gonna be transparent here, so it won't be that big of a deal if we mess up a little bit. But that looks pretty good. I think I got most of it. And yeah, the margins on both sides look accurate, so that's good. And now what we're going to do is hide um, the background blue layer and hide the white background. Now, I know you can't see this. I can barely see it. But there is a slight uh, gradient here, which um, when we overlay onto our blue background that's repeating will look really nice. And uh, we'll just apply a nice little fix to it um, for IE6 and uh, any other browsers that may not support transparency, uh, transparent pings. But that is a uh, time for another day. So we will go ahead and name this. And we will say uh, BG for background, gradient. OK. Hit save for web and devices. And we want to save this as a PNG 24. And save all user slices. Hopefully that came out OK. That looked a little strange in the preview here. Uh, let's see, background gradient, let's open that real quick with preview. Give that one second to load here. Yeah, okay, and you can see it did exactly what we wanted. There's barely a gradient here. I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but, um, but it, it worked as we uh, wanted it to, and it's now transparent. So uh, let me unhide everything. We'll clear our slices, and we are one step closer um, to moving into WordPress. Next uh, next day, day 13, um, as soon as we get to it, we are just going to start. Um, we'll probably just start with the home page. This page right here, we are going to dive straight into WordPress code 
and we are going to get this theme uh, up and rocking. And I think it's going to be you know quite an awesome WordPress um, theme uh, when it's done, and and hopefully we'll all learn a lot from it um, when this series is over. So stay tuned, guys. Uh, like I said, next time we will um, be taking this straight into WordPress. So. If you're enjoying this, I, uh, I urge you to subscribe to our RSS feed over to the left. Um, any comments or suggestions you guys have, we're very open to, so let me know. Um, happy WordPress coding, everybody, and have a great day.